I'm just going to say, wow. <laughs> well, I s first of all, I want to thank Dr. Martin, Dave. It's taken me about 27, 30 years to kind of, you know, let Dave roll off my tongue. So he always teases me about that. Um, so I want to thank you for that introduction. I also want to thank Dr. Fortenberry, excuse me, Dennis Fortenberry, Bobby Vanderpoel, the entire ASTDA uh, selection committee, and especially Jeff Klausner for his nomination. So it sounds really cliche, but it never has rung even more true that it, you really cannot do something like this by yourself. As you can see, I mean, there's so many gamut, so many things to take care of, especially with family and work, et cetera. You just have to have good help. And I mean, we've all heard you just have to surround yourself by good people. How, is that correct? Do you agree? I almost said amen. So I'm going to begin um, with my family. I've been blessed with, you know, the tremendous family, friends, colleagues, opportunities throughout the year, many of whom are in this room who are responsible for those. So with regards to my girls, you saw the beautiful daughters here. They have really kept me on my toes. They went to an all-girls school, all three of them, same school. So you go through the three things in sequence every year, the same thing. And so they keep you on your toes, though. So you, we've, we've all heard Dr. Mom. But then you have to, when you're the STD doctor mom, it's a whole nother story. And so they'll always preface it with, now a friend of mine, it's not me now, it's not me, but a friend of mine. And thankfully then they would put me on the phone with the friend. And so true, it would be either, you know, UTI, some viral syndrome, but they were all, you know, scared to death at first. So the second thing about them keeping me on my toes was I was on a live televised show once, uh, speaking about STIs, and there was a, a call-in session, you know, from the listening audience. So only to get home to find out that one of those listening audience calls was my middle daughter in a disguised voice. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm glad I had the answer correct, though. And she was only about 12 years old at that time. But I do have some family members here. I would like to recognize my husband, Douglas Taylor for his ever-ending love and support. My niece, who's our family dentist, Dr. Amira Jackson. She's here also not only celebrating, but helping me to drive because I had some ear surgery issues recently and I'm not free to, uh, clear to, to fly yet. And then finally, my miracle sister. Many of you know her, Ms. Claudette Sislo, would you please stand? My sister is an inspiration because she is, was a double lung transplant recipient four years ago. And so I do want to publicly thank those who knew about that and who prayed and kept her in your prayers and wishes, well wishes, and still ask about her uh, today. So I'm glad that she's had a chance to meet many of you. Well, I had no idea at all that I would be working on or focusing on sexually transmitted infections when I decided to go into infectious diseases. It was Dave Martin who invited me also to an ISSTDR meeting that just had a tremendous impact upon my life and upon my career. Just to sit there and hear presentation after presentation about the burden of STD infections and also um, the need for clinical services and clinical research, particularly in the African American community, that really had that tre tremendous impact upon my life. It was also there that I saw the interactions of Dr. Martin Dave with his colleagues on the international and national scene, and I loved their, and they, they had forged friendships over years of working together. And it was so welcoming to me, even at that meeting, that I said, this is the place for me. So for each one of you and at the, that were present at that meeting that day, I do want to thank you. So I also want to thank them throughout the years. There have been several others. Um, not only one other thing though, Dave was also, he mentioned us getting the clinic back together. He was really one of the main catalysts for that because we were like, there is no way that Hurricane Katrina is going to let Dave go out his career end like that. There was just no way. So that was one of our, our you know, heart to heart kind of, this is why we're doing this. So I do want to also extend, extend much gratitude to our LSU Crescent Care Sexual Health Center. Those guys have done an awesome job. You just kind of put the plan together and they kind of work the plan. And so we definitely appreciate them for that. 
I also want to thank Dr. Deanne Gruber and the Louisiana State STD HIV Program Office. Some of them are here today. Would you wave your hand? We appreciate you guys. <laughs> Those who are along the way who uh, were predecessors of Dr. Gruber include Lisa Longfellow, who appointed me at the first time as medical director for the state health department, as well as Jim Ciano, who was the, uh, the administrator at that time, who financed that for, uh, for a number of years, and also Dr. Kevin Stevens, who appointed me as the city health department director, uh, city health department STD clinic director. So last but certainly not least, though, we have to thank uh, Dr. Dr. Kellen Deal from NIAID, as well as Gail Boland from the CDC, Dr. Ned Hook from the Clinical Trials, the STD Clinical Trials Group, and Jeannie Marazzo, who just really have, have uh, trusted us, even in the midst of rebuilding our clinic twice in a decade, uh, to still to still have us to participate in clinical trials that, and, and, and diagnostic trials. I also wanna thank our partners in industry, all of the other university PIs, co-PIs, co-authors, your staff, your clinic staff, and your laboratory staff who have supported us through all these years. So thank you very much once again to the committee and to all of you for your support. <laughs>